Aachen Prison is both Germany's most dangerous and most secure prison. It houses murderers, sex offenders, and pedophiles. Their cells are inspected regularly. We've had hollowed out cans of fish, for example. Once I even found money in the sole of someone's shoe, which you really wouldn't expect. Peter Trinkwalder was convicted of murder. Now in his mid-50s, he's serving a life sentence. It sounds like a cliché, but not a single day has gone by where I haven't thought about freedom. Dutch-German inmate Volker Nedel was also sentenced to life for sexual abuse. He no longer thinks about freedom. As long as there's an element of uncertainty, I don't want to cause anyone more harm. Surrounded by unscalable walls and razor barbed wire, riddled with cameras and motion sensors, and lit up both day and night. Aachen Prison looks like a fortress. Danja Emmons has been in the prison for eight years, but by choice, she works as a prison officer. Her most important tools? A set of keys and a personal alarm device. This is our personal alarm device, called a PNG. I have to log in for it. We all have these in our belts, so that if something happens, we can raise an alarm to the whole ward. And then they announce where help is needed. Another officers arrive. The officers are not allowed to carry firearms, tasers or pepper spray. Running around here with a weapon would be too risky. When we're taking someone outside, then we have to be armed. But here in the building, it would be very easy for me to lose the weapon if I were alone on the ward with 20 men. Barred windows and locked zones. The most frequent task which Dania Emmons does every day is opening and closing the doors. There's already some bad news waiting in her office. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Were you with prisoner? He got into an altercation. Do you know what happened? Yes, I was there and the two of them had a little fight in the showers. The issue still hasn't been resolved. They're both still telling their sides. For now, they should be locked in. So keep them both shut? Yeah. Okay. okay, let's do that first. Records are kept of every incident which occurs in the prison, so that the early shift is aware of what happened the night before. They're both mildly injured, with swelling around the eyes, and a small cut above the eye. So we are keeping them locked in their cells to separate them from one another. The ward and block managers will resolve this, and listen to both their versions. Of the 800 inmates in Aachen prison, 130 highly dangerous criminals are serving life sentences with preventive detention. They're convicted pedophiles, murderers, and sex offenders. The inmates are let out every morning at six. I go to open up just before six. I go from door to door and do what's called a life check. The prison houses exclusively male convicted criminals. Good morning. First of all, I let out the inmates with jobs in the kitchen or maintenance. So they can get to work first. The cells have different sizes and house different numbers of prisoners. Here we just have singles and over here is a group cell. There's space for four people, but right now they're just two. Good morning. Most of the single cells, officially called holding rooms, are seven square meters in area, some of them nine. The prison officers can look into the cells through a spy hole and secure the cell by locking the door. 30-year-old inmate Christopher Ostau has a clear layout for his holding room. Let me introduce my office, my quote-unquote dining room. Here's the living room, bedroom and bathroom. You have to divide it up a bit. 
Sometimes I see other cells with completely empty walls, with no pictures or anything. I couldn't have that. I have to make it a little cozy so I can feel good. The 30-year-old father must stay behind bars for almost 11 years. He's one of the few inmates who will discuss his crimes openly. I've committed all sorts of crimes. I started early at around 14. I've done robbery, theft, grand theft auto, breaking and entering, assaults. That's what I'm here for. In a few years, Christopher Ostrau will be free again. Other inmates will be locked in here forever. Good morning. Good morning. Are you working today? I'm going a bit later today. I have an appointment with the barber, since he's coming from seven. Okay. I've told my boss. Good, so I'll take you to work afterwards. Okay. Exactly, thank you. You're welcome. Former trucker Peter Trinkwalder has been sentenced to life with preventive detention for murder. If you ask me why I'm officially here, I can say from my perspective, murder and self-defense. I want to make clear that that isn't sugarcoating my crime, on the contrary. There are also cases where, in my experience, the verdict isn't what it seems. Peter Trinkwalder admits he killed someone, just not planned, cold-blooded murder. Many inmates claim not to have done what they're accused of, and that they have been punished too harshly. Psychologists call this repression. There are definitely a couple of cases here and there where that is the case. But for everyone who claims to have an unfair sentence, to be telling the truth, something would be going very wrong. Peter Trinkwalder, in his 50s, is serving a life sentence. He has decorated his room completely in blue. From the blankets to the coffee pot, everything is color-coordinated. I'm not a Schalke fan. I chose blue because I don't like to have too many different colors. Green, yellow, red, black. I don't like that. Having everything in blue for me creates harmony. I only say harmony because it's just one room. So it all looks a bit more harmonious than if it were multicolored. That's why I chose blue. It also means hope, right? But that's not why I chose it. Right next door to Peter Trinkwalder, there is in fact a Schalke fan. And somewhat unusually for Aachen prison, he happily invites us into his cell. Yeah. So, hello there. Welcome to my kingdom. Let me introduce myself. My name is Volker, I'm a citizen of Germany and the Netherlands. You can see my German side. The cell or the holding room is in beautiful blue because at the national level, I'm a huge Schalke fan. And come on, rein. And if you come in, you can see that on the international level, I support the Dutch soccer team. I also have a Frisian flag here on the right. Schalke scarves, flags, baseball caps and jerseys. This cell looks just like a fan store. Volker Nedel is also serving a life sentence with preventive detention. I got nine years and six months for sexual abuse. I was also given preventive detention. That means next year, on July 4th, I will have served my sentence, and from July 5th, I will serve my preventive detention. Volker Nedel does not want to divulge the nature of his sexual offense. In prison, that can be dangerous. Many inmates have wives and children. The additional preventive detention means that even though the 56-year-old has served his prison sentence, he still poses a threat to society. My problem is, and I was honest about this at my hearing in court, I still have too many fantasies and my head still isn't free. So for now, there's no possibility of being freed. And for my part, I told the court that I'm not pursuing a discharge right now, because as long as there's an element of uncertainty, I don't want to cause anyone more harm. Straight after waking them up, prison officer Danja Emutz brings the first prisoners to work. The man in white is the maintenance worker. 
The others are going to work in the kitchen. Maintenance worker Christopher Ostrau takes a small tray with some butter, slices of sausage and cheese. Most of the prisoners eat breakfast on the job. Meanwhile, prison officer Danja Imutz deals with the inmates' mail. This is where the inmates in the open block can send their mail. Over here is the therapy residence, and downstairs is an open block. We structured it so that we don't have to collect their mail from them the whole day. But it's also like that in the closed areas. They send off their mail at 6.15 in the morning, when they get their breakfast. The open shared residences house trusted long-term inmates with good behavior records. Their cells are only locked at night. During the day, they can move freely through their living area. In the mail, they send letters to family, applications for a doctor's visit or requests for the prison library. We always check the content of the letters first. We have to check that there aren't any blueprints or escape plans. What Dania reads the most are love letters. These are real displays of affection, written over multiple days, and one to an inmate's daughter. How does it affect me? Well, it depends. Sometimes I can't help but feel bad when I see what fate has dealt them. They're not just people who were born and decided I'm going to kill someone now. We have everything here. Since Aachen is a maximum security prison, when you look in most of their files, you can see that they often grew up in homes or were abused themselves as children. The next task of the day is sending off the checked mail and picking up the incoming mail. We have to check that they have been stamped, because some of them will have forgotten. Then the postal service comes to pick them up. You also have to check where it's going and put it in the correct compartment. She's barely back in the office when the telephone rings. Imons? Good morning. The prison repair service reports that a cell lock needs to be replaced in living block one. In the open block, they are handed their own keys to their holding rooms. An inmate has lost his key one or two weeks ago and now must apply for a new one. He'll have to pay for it, of course. I'm not sure of the exact price. A colleague is coming now to get a new key fitted. In the open blocks, the cell doors have two locks. The bigger one can only be opened and closed by the officers. The smaller one is a latch lock. The inmate can open it from the outside, but cannot close it from the inside. I can also lock it from the outside. He can try to turn the key from the inside, but nothing will happen. He can use his key to lock his door to stop other inmates from stealing anything. Many of them are in here for theft, so we need to ensure that they can keep their things safe. There are several large workshops on the prison compound, from the joinery to the locksmiths. Ten different businesses produce their products here. They range from packaging jobs to complex assembly lines. The prison also has its own utility room, a laundry and a warehouse. I have to note down for my colleagues how many people were sent off. It's harder to see in the dark, but my colleagues are behind, receiving the inmates. So we have to wait until they are past the yard and in their workstations. Not everyone in Aachen prison has a job. There are also unemployed inmates, as well as those who must still attend school. Please release inmates for classes. Now we're taking everyone who has classes or cleaning jobs in the education center. One student has registered as sick, so he won't be going today. No one from the upstairs block is going, but one or two from downstairs are. Aachen prison houses over 60 nationalities. Many new arrivals don't speak a single word of German. As an incentive to learn, the inmates are paid 34 euros a month to take parts in classes. 
First, there are the beginners' courses for people who can't speak a word of German. Mrs. Sildebrand teaches those. They start from, hello, how are you, mom and dad? Then there are the intermediate courses, where they form their own essays and write out dictations. Now you can see all the students coming, the class is filling up. As well as language courses such as German, Spanish or English, there's also a computer course. In the computer course, inmates are introduced to computing, so that when they're released, they might at least be able to apply for jobs. Some of them have been in here for 10 or 15 years, so they've missed the whole digital age. When some of them were incarcerated, TVs were still black and white, so the computer course is there to bring them up to speed. Today, Peter Tankwalder, an inmate serving a life sentence, can come to work a little later. He has an appointment with the barber. The barber isn't here yet. We can hear when the door opens and go and see if he's arrived or not. But this morning, the barber, who is self-employed, doesn't arrive. Peter Trinkwalder must get ready for work. From most of the inmates' perspective, this 50-something has a dream job, working in the warehouse. So this is my daily route to work. Eight doors are opened and shut in front and behind him. In the prison warehouse, Peter Trinkwalder is the maintenance worker, meaning he's a jack of all trades. He cleans the uniforms, washes dirty dishes, and keeps the whole warehouse clean. It's a good job. I always say that good is relative. Working in the chamber here is quite an independent job. You can work by yourself and you know what needs to be done. I prefer that to working in a workshop where someone is always looking over your shoulder. Fortunately, that's not the case here. There are extra prison cells in the warehouse. They are for inmates who have a lawyer's appointment, for example, or will get day release from imprisonment soon. These, for example, are probably the clothes of an inmate who has an appointment. Since he's had his clothes for a few years, I wash them one more time so that he can wear them fresh again. Warehouse manager Thomas Magne is aware of his employees' long prison sentences. Still, he judges them not by their past, but by what they are today. I see the workers here first and foremost as people. Mr. Trenkwalde is calm, quiet. He has prison experience, of course, but also life experience as well. He's tidy and easy to get along with and works here as a cleaner. We don't have any problems with him. Whichever job he's assigned to, practically every inmate thinks that he earns too little for the task he must perform. I earn 100 euros a month. Is it enough? I don't think so. It's tight for me. I don't get any support from outside, so I have to pay for everything myself, even postage stamps. Prison officer Danja Imunz is familiar with the issue concerning low pay, but there's something the inmates like to forget. If he says that 100 euros isn't enough, he's not counting the fact that people on the outside pay for his rent, for example. He lives here cost-free and is fed three times a day for free. Some people could only dream of that. And all of the visits to doctors, specialists, dentists, that all adds up. So I think his 100 euros are actually enough for him to buy tobacco or candy or whatever else he wants to buy. Inmate Christopher Ostrau is also a maintenance worker responsible for the open living area. He washes the inmates' clothing and cleans the cell block. The 30-something earns much more than the other inmates, 140 euros a month. But despite this position of trust, he must always be ready for a cell inspection. Mr. Ostrau, we have to check your holding room quickly, okay? 
the officers check three to four cells per day at random. First, a short strip search. This is normal for me. You definitely get used to it. They have to check to make sure you're not hiding anything. So. My colleague has to perform the search. Since it's men for men and women for women, we are in a fully male prison, so unfortunately, I always have to fetch my colleagues. A full inspection of a holding room would take a whole hour. So the officer focuses on the essentials. The window bars and outer wall are always checked. We just look for any security threats, things that aren't allowed to have. It's mostly food in here, but there are a lot of possible hiding places. We're looking for drugs, phones or other contraband. In the past, officers have found weapons or escape tools. Experience has taught them which hiding places the inmates prefer. We always have to look in the corners that the inmates don't want to be seen or where they don't think we'll want to look. Trash cans are very popular, for example. After all, who wants to look in a trash can? Dirty washing is another popular spot. First rule of holding room inspections, anything can be a hiding place. We've had hollowed out cans of fish, for example, that you'd think still look like regularly packed cans of fish. Once I even found money in the sole of someone's shoe, which you really wouldn't expect. Even the mattresses are popular stash spots. It doesn't take long to cut a hole and stick a cell phone inside. Of course, you always have to be careful not to catch a syringe or anything like that. Inmate Ostrau's room, like many other inmates, is covered with photos of naked women. I usually look behind family photos and I check their criminal history. For example, if anyone has previous history with children or something, I check that there aren't pictures of small naked children on the walls, especially in these residences. But otherwise, they should know for themselves. They haven't seen any women while they've been here, so if they want to decorate their rooms like that... Young female prison officers in particular often experience sexual harassment at the hands of inmates. I can't really describe it. Someone would say something dumb like, nice butt, or whatever. Some of our female colleagues would attest to that. But in that moment, you have to step in and say, that's enough now, no more. Convicted felon Christopher Ostrau's walls are not just covered with pictures of naked women. There's also room for photos of his family, wife, children, and stepchildren. I wouldn't say they were thrilled, it just happened. Luckily, they're still standing by me despite everything. They visit me once a month from Turingen. Every time they drive 800 kilometers, 400 here and 400 back, which is a long way to go. So it's easier for me than it is for them. Aachen Prison is one of the highest security correctional facilities in Germany. Why? It has infrared motion sensors, complete camera surveillance, and a huge body of staff with over 400 employees for around 800 inmates. This is the final destination for convicted felons. A food delivery has arrived. Werner Masak is an industry leader in deliveries for German prisons. He delivers to his clients in Aachen prison once a week. Now we are unloading the inmates' commissary, which they ordered on Friday. It's being delivered now and will be divided up between the blocks. A huge truck full of all kinds of supplies. During unloading, it becomes clear that even in prisons, things don't always go according to plan. A crate falls to the ground. Once a week, the inmates can buy almost anything. Of course, they can't buy drugs, alcohol or cell phones. But apart from that, they can buy anything. Shower gels, all kinds of candy, shaving products, which you can imagine. TV magazines, anything. Change of scenery. 
the closed section of Block 5. Here, untried prisoners wait for the supplies they've ordered. Different safety guidelines apply here. As you can see, the whole hallway is a bit more sterile, and the feeling of distance we spoke about earlier is more pronounced here. Sometimes you just know their names, since the turnover is so high. A lot of them are imprisoned for failing to pay a fine or something like that. So they're gone after a day, and then the next one comes. It's a madhouse. Right next door is occupational therapy, where inmates gain their first experience working with tools. Alongside hobby horses and wooden motorcycles, this is also where Aachen Prison's bestsellers are made. We're mainly building birdhouses, nesting boxes, bat boxes for the forest service, and then feeding troughs for the bridle, or even posts to put the saddle on. Johannes Tunnison from the Aachen area used to work in the sex trade and was sentenced to six and a half years in prison for attempted murder. I used to be a part of a biker gang, and we were involved in drug dealing, prostitution, pimping, all that crap. There was a new gang member I was meant to work with, and I found out that he messed around with kids. I tried to stab him, but didn't kill him. And then I got sent here. Guilty by association. In the Aachen prison warehouse, it's time for inmate Peter Trinkwalder to tackle the prison library. The books need dusting and the floors need mopping, thoroughly. As long as I don't bust my back, it's okay. The prison library stores 8,000 books and around 5,000 DVDs. There are books in several languages, including religious texts, from the Bible to the Quran. The only thing that we don't have is pornography. Prison celibacy reigns supreme. There's no pornographic material, no DVD stash. Maybe some erotic novels, but very mild. Convicted sexual offender Volker Nedel works in the core area of the prison warehouse. He's also hung up a Schalke crest in the tailoring workshop. I'm the prison tailor for the convicted inmates. We have two tailors, one for convicted inmates and one for inmates awaiting trial, who's only there for when the clothing and laundry stack up. We don't make anything new, we only do repairs and patchwork. Lunch is served at 11.30 a.m. In the past, the inmates had to be brought to their cells to eat their food, but that required too many staff members. Now, there are break rooms in the workshops and the warehouse. Most people complain about the prison food, me included. Of course, you can't make everyone happy. But it's quite the combination, sausage with white cabbage and vegetables. It just doesn't go together. Today, we have tomato sauce and pasta mixed with eggs, for example. Some like it, some don't. It fills you up if you finish it, but I usually don't. It's enough to survive. And if he's starving, then I'll come over in the evening. I trained as a cook, so for example, last night we had hamburgers, which we made in the block. This large kitchen is where 30 inmates prepare the day's lunch. From Monday to Thursday, they serve pasta, sausages, pesto, and meatballs. On Fridays, fish is on the menu, Saturday is soup, and Sundays are for roasts. The menus can be adjusted to meet vegan or religious dietary requirements. Like in all kitchens, special food regulations apply. We have to be careful to take what are called retained samples, which are stored for a week, in case an entire block reports a salmonella outbreak. If there is a salmonella, the samples from the previous day are taken to the lab to see if it came from the food or elsewhere. 
Prison officer Danya Amons is going back to the warehouse. Again, there are countless doors which need opening and closing. There are also famous criminals in Aachen prison, a former soccer pro, a corrupt politician, and the mastermind behind the Gladbeck hostage crisis, Hans-Jürgen Rüsner. But for Danja Emunz, murderers are not all the same. I'd say if an inmate is a serial murderer, he'll probably keep coming back if he ever gets the chance to leave prison. And someone who just acted in the heat of the moment, in their own home, who may have been tortured for years and then hit someone, those are the people we probably won't see again. Danja Emunz is picking up inmate Trenkwalda. He has a doctor's appointment, and the barber has shown up. And since he only comes once a month to Block 1, inmate Trenkwada is allowed a visit even during work hours. But before the 50-something can leave the warehouse, he has to give in his work tools. I have to give in my work stuff before I go to my appointment. My box cutter, which I use for work, and the keys to the locker, where I keep my hand tools, cleaning equipment, clothes, etc. See ya. See ya. Aachen Prison has two sick wards, where several doctors run a clinic from Monday to Friday. Another colleague takes care of emergency service, which ensures round-the-clock care. A dentist also makes regular visits. Peter Trenkwalde has arrived at the clinic and is now being met by a medical assistant. Mr. Trenkwalde? Yes? Hello. Hello. Sit down. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. What's the matter? I feel like a dying swan today. I'd like some painkillers for my headaches. How long have you had them? For days. I'll give you something for that, but if they stay longer, you'll have to come back. If possible, an ibuprofen. Any allergies? Ibuprofen? None. 400 horsepower? 400 horsepower. Okay. Four should be enough. Inmate Trenkwalda needs to hurry so as not to miss his haircut. And the next patient is already waiting for medical assistant Thomas Klaus. We don't have normal patients, and I mean normal in quotation marks, because there's a lack of gratitude for what we do for the inmates. They want more than what they are entitled to or require. To be frank, sometimes prisoners are the best doctors, so it's always difficult. That kind of thing happens less in hospitals. Another big difference is that we have a lot of drug addicts who require daily doses of methadone. Thomas Klaus has seen it all in Aachen prison. From resuscitating an inmate to treating an officer whose neck an inmate had attacked with a fork. But there's one thing he still hasn't gotten used to. We have to open and close every door. I've heard people say they even do it at home now, but that hasn't happened to me yet. <laughs> Meanwhile, inmate Peter Trenkwalda has returned to his cell, where he's awaiting his haircut. For the convicted murderer, television offers a glimpse of freedom. As a father, he doesn't want to go into detail about the murder. I've been dealing with the crime for the last 16 years. There's hardly a day when I don't think about it. Of course, I regret it. I never wanted that outcome. I didn't plan it beforehand either, contrary to the court's verdict. There are situations in life which you can get pulled into, and then your life can change within five minutes. Peter's wife left him following his life sentence. He hasn't seen his son and daughter, now nearly adults, since 2003. He's completely alone, without any help from the outside. I think someone watching from outside would see my prison cell and think, TV, radio, he has a DVD player as well. But people don't realize that I also worked for these things as an inmate, and I had to save for months to afford each one. There's no contribution from mum, dad, or whoever else. I work for all of it myself. And I think I have the right to that, even if I'm in prison. The inmates don't have to pay the barber. Instead, the barber takes a small red chip, which he can exchange with the prison administration. A relief for Peter Trenkwalda. The convicted murderer was worried that he would have to wait another month for the haircut. Thank you. You're welcome. See you next time. Bye. Bye.
Meanwhile, prison officer Dania Imuts is handling office tasks. Working in a prison was never her dream job. But Danya, who's in her mid-30s and married to a colleague, wanted a career with job security. Then I applied here, and it all went pretty quickly. I haven't regretted it to this day, and I'd happily do it all over again. Many aspects of working here are always the same. Wake up the inmates at 6 a.m. and bring them to work. Bring them back at 2.30 p.m. Then free time for the inmates and finally lights out at 9 p.m. What makes working here so exciting is dealing with the inmates, for me personally at least. Here in the closed residence, the relationship is quite close. It's completely different downstairs in the open block. You know their stories a bit more, how they live at home and what their situation is. It's exciting to see, have they developed at all? And if yes, in which direction? Inmates who don't have work or who have been written off as sick are allowed to have their lunch in the shared living area. Mr. Ostral? Yes? Are we going to get your food? Does Mr. Heinrich also know? Yes, Mr. Heinrich? Again, countless doors need opening and closing. We're going to get food in the kitchen. I'm dressed like this because we have to wear gloves and cover our arms when handing out food for hygiene reasons. Even the elevators are secured by a lock. Preparing lunch for 800 inmates at the same time requires a stroke of logistical genius. I have to say, in comparison to other facilities, they really put in the effort here. The food is pretty good, I think. You'll see that soon. For example, today is chicken nuggets. That's definitely something I can eat. Let's serve the open inmates first. Enjoy your meal. Most inmates don't want to show their faces, but maintenance work is a job everyone would love to do. You're in your block the whole day, see a lot of people, and make a lot of money at the end of the day. So I can't complain. So also, ich kann mich nicht beschweren. In the open residences, respect is the rule of thumb, not just between inmates, but also towards the prison officers. This isn't the case in every wing of Aachen prison. I think in recent years the proportion of foreigners has increased. And of course they come here with their own cultures. I don't know if it's always their intention. For some it definitely is. But I think that in their cultures they've never learned how to behave around a woman. Especially not to the extent where a woman comes up to them, opens the door and says, now we're doing this, this and that. Now, inmate Trinkwalda can return to work with a fresh haircut. But first, he must retrieve his work tools. Hi. Hello. You're already back. For you. Thank you. The inmate is not allowed to carry the sharp box cutter outside of the warehouse. If I got off work now and was carrying the knife, if I was stopped on the way for a pocket check, for example, they could find the knife and assume that I intend to harm someone. It doesn't make a difference whether it's an officer or an inmate. It would be a security risk and I would be immediately under suspicion whether or not I planned anything. It wouldn't matter if it was true or not, I would be immediately detained. Prison officer Dania Imutz is going to meet her boss. The director of Aachen prison is promoting a colleague to a permanent position. Dania Imutz is acting as staff counsel. So, today is an exciting occasion. It's always my job to hand out promotion certificates, which happens far too rarely for my taste, since I always just see beaming faces. That wasn't always the case in Aachen prison. In 2009, two inmates escaped with the help of a prison officer. Even today, drugs and cell phones are smuggled into Germany's most secure prison. Because we can't seal off the prison completely. We have regular visitors coming in, which is something we want. We encourage the inmates to have social contact with the outside world. 
lawyers come in, as do volunteers, and we also have letters and packages arriving. So there are many points of entry for drugs, especially since they can be so small. Of course, we take great care in checking, and our visitation team is very well trained and capable. They turn up a lot, but not everything. That's impossible. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Have a good evening. It's 2.30 p.m. and inmate Peter Trenkwalder has finished work for the day. After a shower, he can go back to his residence for some free time. This inmate is practicing for a concert evening for Aachen Prison's Cultural Week. Another is baking cookies for his family's long visit. I'm making cookies filled with jam. The 30-something wants to surprise his parents, uncle and aunts for their three-hour long visit in a few days. We came up with the recipe ourselves. We kept trying it until it worked. The former Leverkusen drug lord shot a rival twice in the stomach at close range. The victim only survived thanks to an emergency operation. I'm in prison for three separate acts of violence, which got me sentenced to 10 years in prison. I've served three years and three months, so I have eight years and three months left. Like all inmates, he dreams of freedom constantly. The future I want is a sensible life, to be reintegrated into society, a crime-free life, that's the goal. Maybe even start a family, bring kids into the world and work for my money to set a good example for them. Inmates are allowed to apply for long visits after serving three months of their sentence. This is the long visit room. Inmates are allowed to meet their relatives here once a month unobserved. They are shut in here for three hours. There isn't much here. Couch, a little play area for the kids, a little kitchenette where they can heat something up. And then a shower and restroom so they can get through the three hours. Prison officer Danja Imutz's shift has ended for the day. She just has to lock her keys in a locker and recharge her alarm device. Then wait at the gate, which separates the prison from the free world. Considering that there was a camera around, I'd say everything went okay. Apart from the weekend, when there was a fight in the showers and we kept those two inmates locked up. Apart from that, it was pretty relaxed as usual. Long-term inmate Peter Trinkwalder arrives back in his living area, freshly washed, following his shift in the warehouse. First, a cup of coffee. Otherwise, he sticks to his motto. Passing time gets you through life. By that I mean that monotony plays a role in all the daily hardships you go through. But you always get through the day and hope to keep going on. So I tell myself, passing time gets you through life. Inmate Trinkwalder declines his permitted daily hour of fresh air. He isn't interested in the opportunity to play sports three times a week either. Some inmates play basketball, work out with weights, or play soccer on the artificial grass. Others play card games in the common room or work on their hobbies, like inmate Volker Nedel. This is my passion, since I obviously can't just go to the training ground to get an autograph. I wrote to some players and the trainer and was sent back their autographs. Schalke as a team is happy to do this. Generally, when I write to Schalke, I get a response within 14 days. Peter Trinkwalder is about to write a letter to his 16-year-old daughter and his 18-year-old son. He hasn't seen either of them since 2003. I make sure to always write on special occasions, birthdays, holidays, etc. I've never had a response, but my mail has never been sent back, so I assume that it's been received. 
My hope is now that the kids are a bit older, they can decide for themselves whether they want to come and see me at some point. Good evening. Good evening. Podcast. I'm ready. Yes. Medical assistant Thomas Klaus and Peter Trinkwalder are working together on the Podknast, the prison cast project. Inmates film short stories about their lives in prison and post them online at podknast.de. For a start, I was always interested in writing. And when I first got to Aachen, they asked me if I was interested in taking part in Podknast. Even though I had no experience with cameras, sound and the technological side of things, it was interesting to get to grips with it. It's an interesting way for me to use my free time. The topics are defined by the environment, locked cells and closed off hallways. Today, a fellow inmate is showing off some remarkable magic tricks. How did I discover magic? When I was eight, I saw a card trick which fascinated me so much that I said, I want to learn that too. And then I began learning card tricks, first with a magic set that children get, and then I developed it further. Now, alongside chess, it's my passion. Card tricks, coin tricks, it's what I live for. It's not exactly common, is it? That kind of thing normally happens during free time activities. Like a prisoner will go to another inmate or during group activities like chess or the podcast. And they'll do it amongst themselves. But I've never seen a skill at this level. And the inmates rarely come to me and say, here, I have to show you something. It usually just stays between the inmates. So a show like this is good to show off what they can do. You don't normally get that in the daily routine. Stefanos is serving eight years for robbery. Enough time to practice. His fellow inmates are enthralled. They're all totally fascinated by it. They keep asking me, how do you do it? But I'll never give away my secrets. Up to six inmates help out with the Podknast project. Through working on the films, they learn how to get on with other people. Have a nice evening. See you next week. You too. Thanks. Bye. When the inmates spend their evenings in their cells, their thoughts almost always turn to their wife and kids. I differentiate between people who have planned to commit a crime, whether it's robbery, assault or whatever, with the knowledge that if they get caught, they'll pay the price and not be able to see their wives and children anymore, damaging them in doing so. I don't have any sympathy for people like that. They shouldn't complain about it. As opposed to people like me, whose lives were suddenly changed within five minutes, without having time to think about the consequences, because I didn't plan the crime. The last highlights of the day are dinner and a TV show. Whoever spends a night in a prison cell soon learns that freedom is the most precious thing on the planet. Throughout my whole sentence, it sounds like a cliché, but not a single day has gone by where I haven't thought about freedom and yearned for the outside. Not a single day where I haven't thought about how my loved ones are, my children, whom we spoke about earlier. There are a lot of things which remind me of it as well, like when I watch TV and see a family. My own desires and aspirations crop up again, no question. Good night. Good night. This door won't open again for another nine hours. <laughs>